So let's think of an example here where we have an issue that is coming from the kind of program and kind of the options that we went through uh, and we're trying to think about the impact that that issue is going to have on our final plan making. Uh, so let's say we decided uh, that we're doing a multifamily apartment building and we want to build it with passive principles. What would be the issues from that decision that would impact our planning process? Well, the obvious ones are going to be fenestration and orientation. Uh, we can't really think about passive principles without thinking about where the sun angles are, uh, how will the light's going to get into the building, uh, solar gain, are we trying to get, accept it, are we trying to block it, is it a temperate situation where we're trying to do both depending on uh, the season, uh, and sort of what's the sort of general uh, idea, and if it's about sunlight and about passive uh, gain of heat, well then it's all going to be about the, the angle of the sun and the relationship of the building to the angle of the sun. So how it sits on a site, uh, how that site uh, is related to the path of the sun, but also the section of the building and how, uh, uh, how the sunlight will uh, hit the building and either bounce deeper into the space or get blocked from going in directly uh, and create either an indirect light or a direct light, uh, all of that. So if we want to say, for example, uh, just have a heat sink, So here's our space here, and we really want to get the sunlight to be able to come in and just give us a very beautiful, warm feeling in the floor and actually help spread the heat uh, in, you know, maybe a sunny place where it gets cold. Um, well, okay, that means that decision is saying that this floor material at least to the point where the sun's going to reach it, needs to be a material that can accept the heat, that has the ability to be a heat sink. So maybe this is concrete, or maybe it's slate, or tile, or something like that. So that decision to go with this particular passive idea is trying to create a situation where I have to have that material there in order for that radiant quality to come back up from that sunlight warming that particular space. So that decision to go with a passive principle is saying not only do we need to have the fenestration, these, these windows aligned with the solar path to be able to let the sunlight come in, but we're now talking about what's our floor structure made out of, what's our floor finish made out of. Uh, that it starts impacting all these other decisions. If we decided that we wanted to do this passive heating with this system, but have a wood floor, well, it won't really work. It'll work to a degree. The wood floor will warm up as well, but it won't warm up anywhere near the level of uh, something that has more of a, the ability to be a heat sink. So uh, that's one example of a design decision that starts being uh, uh, impacted by the passive uh, system. Now it might be that our passive system is not about solar gain or, or light at all. Maybe it's about convective currents. Maybe it's about creating air movements through, uh, through a space. So let's say we're thinking about it for an apartment building. So we can imagine a, a plan of an apartment building. There's a stair at one end. There's a stair at the other end. There's a corridor that stretches in between. And then I've got a bunch of units. So I've got a whole bunch of units on a corridor. It's a double loaded corridor. Um, so okay, get that. That makes sense. But not if it's about convective currents. Because if it's, this is about convective currents, that means that window there and that window there we have to somehow encourage the air to come in and then blow back out. It'll be very difficult to make that happen. So if we say that this is about passive principles and those passive principles are about convective currents, uh, what that's telling us is this apartment building wants to look more like, I'm just going to make it up here.
because now what we have going is I can have windows there and there and there and that's going to start to allow air to flow in and out differently than it would have in a flat wall. I can have windows on two different sides and air will flow right across through there and it'll pull some of the inner air with it. So if it's about convective currents, I need to think about where those openings are gonna be. Uh, is it about finding uh, shafts that will move uh, through the space so that air can come from the windows back in and then get to that shaft and go up to the roof, right? I have to build in those elements in order to make that work. Once we said it was about convective currents, the plan of the building changed. Now, it might change so much that we actually say we're not going to do it as a double loaded corridor. Maybe we just want to do a simple building, put a little corridor on the end, we're going to have this be a stair there and a stair there. And this is maybe outside. So I come up the stairs and I'm in an outdoor corridor and these folks have a window there and a window there. And the next ones have a window there and a window there. And that clearly is going to make the ability to have air move right through that space. So the fact that we said we're going to follow uh, the principles of uh, passive design, and we happen to be talking about, in this case, the convective currents, it's dramatically changing our floor plan. We're going to move away from this example, and we're going to start finding these other possibilities, because if we want to do that, we need to find a way to make it work, and that's going to be through the planning process. It's not something that we just add on later. You can't add it on later. It has to be done through the planning process. You can't just put a building and then say later, well, okay, we want the sun to hit these windows if they're not oriented towards where the sun is. We can't just assume the air will find its way down a corridor and around the corner. You have to create really plausible convective currents. So this is uh, that idea that we're talking about all those options before, then we choose some of those options, and now the choice of those options is impacting our finalization of the floor plans and sections and elevations and ceiling finishes and floor finishes and all of those things, that they're all intertwined together.